The Canon 11 to 22 millimeter lens. Is it worth buying? Should you get it? Who should get it? Do I recommend it? We're gonna talk about it in this video. Short version, yeah, it's a great little lens. Uh, who should buy it? Uh, those that have tight spaces to film in or want to do like a vloggy style video. Is it worth buying? If you don't need it, I would say no. Um, if you have the 10 to 18, then I would say buy the adapter and save you a little bit of money. There's the short version. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rodney and I love all things videography. If you're interested, subscribe. The intro was shot on the Sigma 16mm 1.4, which is my favorite lens of all time, but now I have switched to the Canon 11 to 22 and I've got it roughly at that 16mm, but as you can see, I can tighten it up to 22 or I can zoom it out and you can see everything. My microphone, my kicker light, everything. <laughs> uh, what else can you see? My ceiling fan's still going a little bit. So you can see that this lens is actually very, very wide. Um, gives you a very nice wide field of view. So if you have a tight space, just for reference, I'm less than an arm's length away from the lens. If you have a tight space and, and you need that wider lens, this is a great little option. Uh, again, like I said in the intro though, if you have the 10 to 18, you know, I would recommend save your money. And, and just buy an adapter to go on on your camera here but this is a fantastic lens and I would recommend it if it's something that you're interested in um, for me I'm just kind of a gearhead so <laughs> I have a I have a bad habit of just buying gear not so much lately because I recently got married and so we're kind of on a tight budget at the moment but uh, when I was single man I would just buy all sorts of gear uh, for no real reason just just to have it and so I purchased this lens even though I had the 10 to 18 I just liked the smaller form factor that came with this because I mean you know once you add the adapter you, you can see that that it does kind of take up a larger footprint um, but you know again just for the sim you know just what am I trying to say I don't know what I'm trying to say is from the financial side of it, you know, you can save a lot of money if you happen to already have this 10 to 18 rather than go out and spend more money on this particular lens. So what are the pros and cons of this particular lens? Well, again, it's the biggest pro is the wide field of view. So, I mean, you can get really close to the camera. Um, you know, that, that way, if again, if you're in that tight space, that's really good. One of the cons, however, is that it's not a very fast lens, so you won't get that blurry background for the most part. It is possible, but it's not going to be, you know, easily accomplished. You're going to have to have some space behind you to get that blurry background. Another big pro is there is a wide, um, you know, it is a zoom lens, so you can go from, you can get pretty tight, uh, or you can get really wide, you know, whatever it is that you need. Um, so that's really good because it gives you that range, um, but, you know, another con is it's kind of an expensive lens and the majority of this range is actually covered in the kit lens. So unless you just really need that wide view, then, you know, there's not really much point in actually getting this lens. All right, so I'm going to open this wide open, wide open. <laughs> first time talking I'm gonna open this wide as wide as it'll go so you can see the field of view that we got going on here again I'm less than an arm's length away from the lens um, you know as I get closer to the lens whatever I'm less than an arm's length away how does this compare to the 10 to 18 I'm glad you asked boom and through the magic of video editing we're now on the 10 to 18 wide open so you can see the comparison to the 11 to 22 versus the 10 to 18 so this is why i say you know it's not really that big of a difference um so if you already got the 10 to 18 save the money and buy the adapter all right so i have now taken the camera off of the the, the setup here and i've got it on a little handheld and i'm just going to kind of give you the little kind of a walk and talk let you just kind of get a feel for what this looks like if this is what you're looking to do with this lens uh we're you know just i mean we're right here just a little over hands length away from the camera so you can see that it gives you a nice little field of view here so that you can kind of see everything i mean i can get really wide on my shot if i want to go full arm's length but you know after a while that kind of gets a little bit uncomfortable uh i'm just kind of walking around going back and forth so you can see how steady the lens is 
I've got the, the stability on in my M6 Mark II. It's not the strongest, but it's that, <clears throat> that, first, uh, that first little bit of a level there. So this is just kind of an idea of what you can expect from the vlogging shot out of this lens. So there you have it. That's my little review of the Canon 11 to 22. I do think it's a good lens, but I think there are certain needs uh, in order for you to buy the lens. I don't think it's just something you just necessarily have to have in your bag, especially if you've got the 10 to 18, or if you don't even really need that vloggy or tight shot. Uh, as you can see, when I did the walk and talk, it was still a little, the, the, <laughs> the footage was still shaky. I don't have the steadiest of hands anyway, so if you're like me, if you don't have those smooth hands or those steady hands, you can see that, you know, maybe you're going to need a little more uh, post-production to smooth out that footage. But hey, if you're interested in what other Canon lenses I recommend for your M mount, you can check out this video right here. If you want to see something else from my channel that YouTube recommends for you, you can check it out right here. Other than that, guys, I'll talk to you later.